Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine. Microdosing, or the practice of taking small doses of psychedelic drugs to treat mental health is growing in popularity. Today, academic medical centers like Johns Hopkins, Yale, and New York University are collaborating on psychedelic medicine training programs for psychiatrists. The state of Oregon is also poised to become the first state to legalize psychedelics next year. But there are still so many questions about what the move will mean for people seeking treatment. After all, drugs used for microdosing include psilocybin or you know, magic mushrooms, ketamine, and drugs like MDMA. So how does this treatment work and what are the real benefits? To find out, we're sitting down with Eric Neese and he's gonna to talk to us today about microdosing. Now you may know Eric from his 1990s real world New York appearance. But today, the former roommate has turned his sights on helping others oh, from nice past trauma. you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, thanks for talking with me. Um, this is going to be about microdosing, and I see that you're in the middle of treating a friend, Tintin, where mm -hmm. you are right now. What a great experience! I'm, I'm watching it live. I've never really watched it. I shouldn't say that I did watch a show called Pharmacopia and I've seen it done uh, you know, on that show before, but um, what you're doing, I like to, feels more personal. Yeah. You know, experience with your friend right now. Um, so I want to kind of speak to you about microdosing, but more so explain to us what it is. I want people to get a better understanding that this isn't just some trip that everybody wants to go on and it's, it's not just recreational, it's really for mental health. So yeah, I, well, I mean, we're doing much more than microdosing. So yeah, this is, you know, he's experiencing multiple plant medicines. Um, right. He's done, um, um, you know, a mushroom journey, which um, has uh, opened up the door for him to connect with his ancestors and for him to connect with his inner child to be able to create a bridge to his experiences in his life when he was a child and access his subconscious mind right. um, and also to address um, and stimulate his nervous system. So we utilize these different plant medicines um, from all over the world. Um, and there are a, a, a certain group of plants um, that can assist us in that way. So the two plants that my friend has been working with is the mushroom, which is, you know, psilocybin. Right. Um, and also ayahuasca. Now, you know, microdosing has become more popular nowadays. I mean, we're seeing it in movies. We're seeing, um, you know, different uh, universities starting to open up training yeah. programs for physicians and psychiatrists. So this is becoming mm -hmm. mainstream. Can you talk about what microdosing is and what drugs, like drugs are actually used for that? Yeah, well, you can microdose with anything. It's just taking a very small amount of whatever the substance is. Um, in the case of like mushrooms, you can microdose mushrooms where you would take usually like 0.5 or less grams of psilocybin mushrooms. And basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna offer your nervous system a calmer feeling. So if you're dealing with anxiety or depression <clears throat> or um, you know, PTSD, you know, anything that has triggered the nervous system to change its frequency and its vibration to more um it's kind of like it's like a vibration right like your nervous everything is alive in our bodies so our heart just our heart beating is creating a vibration 
right. in our bodies, right? So once our heart stops beating, you know, the, the vibration and the frequency of the cells is obviously going to dramatically change, right? Because right, this right. body will no longer be alive. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's all based on vibration and frequency. So when we go through a emotionally traumatic experience, right? So our bodies are made up of like 80% water. Right. So the heart beating and our experiences throughout the day will change the vibration of the water in our bodies. That's a way of thinking of it. I've never thought of it in that sense well we're water beings and we live yeah. on a planet of water right. <laughs> so no, we you know, <laughs> i mean we're you know here on earth we're water beings but first and foremost we're our soul and our spirit which comes from another system another star system i believe that too so our souls came here to planet earth to have an emotional experience on a planet of water right yes. so so within our within our body not only do we have water but we also have fire and we also have oxygen we also have wind air right and then we also have minerals so all four of these elements you know play a very specific role in our soul having a human experience. earth experience which is really if you know to really simply put it we're just, we're here to have an emotional experience some people are very comfortable having emotional experiences right. whether they are you know labeled as good or bad positive or negative and then there's a lot of people that are very uncomfortable with having, you know, let's say a negative experience, you know, like an experience of, of anger, rage, guilt, shame, resentment, you know, all of these lower frequency, uh, lower vibrational experiences. So are you saying that somebody who would microdose is somebody who's trying to get in touch with those emotions? Or at that no, time. not get in touch. Actually, what the what when you're microdosing, you're basically using that to manage and to cope okay. with those uncomfortable feelings. You would have to take a much larger dose of whatever that plant medicine is to address the root cause okay. of the issue. Okay. That's not going to happen. It would take a long time. It could happen over a very, very long period of time. So if you're microdosing every day, it's very subtle and it's, um, it's just very gently addressing the issue. But when you take a large dose, I'm just going to use uh, mushrooms as an example. If I was to take, you know, 0.5 grams or less of the psilocybin mushroom, it's going to offer me a calming effect in my body. Okay. I'm going to, in my, in my nervous system, it's going to help to calm it down. If I was to take a larger dosage, the psilocybin, which is, you know, connected to the mycelium of the entire planet, our whole planet is covered in mycelium you are mycelium when what you is breathe mycelium? mycelium is is like it's like the energetic network of mushrooms on the entire planet oh interesting okay it, it's so so like our the internet the web right of communication how we all communicate like right now we're communicating yeah. on the web right the the earth the plants all communicate with each other through mycelium okay it's a it's a it's a network i understand of, of of um you know energetic pathways where a tree in you know 
New Zealand can communicate with a tree in North America, and that happens through mycelium. Mycelium, okay. And so you're saying when you're taking larger doses of mushrooms, that, that mycelium, you become a part of nature? Yes, you are nature. Not okay. that you become, not that you become a part of nature. Right, you right. You are nature because what your physical body is made up of is air, fire, water, and earth. Right. You so are made. Now I've never dabbled in in mushrooms uh, as a you know '90s generation Xer, but, <laughs> but um, I heard about some experiences. And can you tell me what why that would work as far as getting in touch with? or you know exploring those traumas why why does that work as opposed to conventional medicines right well okay so what the mushrooms do is now we have a bit of an understanding right so the mycelium and what mushrooms are made of are actually what you are made of and it's connected to the entire earth and it connects you to your lineage Okay. your ancestral lineage within your bloodline in your dna it's all connected okay. the biggest the, you know the biggest deception or you know misunderstanding that us humans have is that we're not all connected to each other that there's some kind of separation or division right. between you and i and the plants and the animals and everything and that's just a big fat lie right that that's actually a, a a limited belief system that we develop over many 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 years of a system that is placed that is designed to create separation and division right so what the mushrooms do is or or these other plant medicines there's something that is uh there's a substance that is inside that's in these plant medicines it's called dmt dimethyltryptamine it's also um referred to as the the god particle okay well wow. or the god the god molecule and you have dmt inside of your body and dmt is everywhere in the plant kingdom there's just higher levels of it in certain plants so in the um in this world the, in the you know shamanic world the spirit world and uh you know utilizing these different plants um from different places around the world they're available to us it's very interesting when you think about that right so in different parts of the world on every continent there are certain plants that have high levels of DMT and the shamans and the medicine men and women of these areas of the earth, the plants came to them to inform them that they were there for them to assist them with their evolution. Wow. I love that. And their healing. So in North America, you would find mushrooms or uh peyote right 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 and in mexico and and so and then in, as you get further south in mexico you have the mushroom and you also have peyote and wachuma which is you know a cactus okay then when you go into south america you have ayahuasca right if that's, i go that's gotten a lot of popularity it has it's you ain't seen nothing yet, but yeah, there's millions and millions and millions of people around the world that are doing ayahuasca ceremonies like every night, every weekend, all over the globe. And, and that's not a low do dose. That that is to expand themselves and get them right. This is their yes for the gusto. This isn't just a moderating, you know, emotions. This is real. correct, right? So to bring it all into perspective, when you're born. When every single human being is born right. and they come through the mother's birth canal, their brain is covered in DMT, dimethyltryptamine. Yeah. And when you die, when you take your last breath, the same exact thing happens. That's why when you hear people say, I had a near death experience and I was going into the light, but then I came back into my body. Right. That's because the DMT has covered the brain 
and it's giving you access to the spirit world, to the unseen world. That's what dimethyltryptamine assists you in doing. So when you take large doses of ayahuasca or large doses of mushrooms, you're building a bridge to the spirit world, but you're also building a bridge into places in your mind where you can't sometimes can't normally access. So in the case of a child who has been sexually abused, 33% of children who are molested, raped, or go through some very intense, traumatic, emotional experience, they will create an aspect of themselves and the and and that aspect of themselves will protect the inner child from accessing that information because it's so traumatizing right right it's so traumatizing to the nervous system the nervous system can't handle the trauma right. the abuse let's we're we're talking about like a situation where you know it's a child they're being abused uh molested and they're confused. Right. They don't understand what's happening. Right. They, they haven't even it. developed those um, mature emotional, you know, intelligence. Right. And it's right. happening maybe with their mom or their dad or an uncle or a grandmother or a grandfather. So this child is incredibly confused that this person who's supposed to be protecting me and loving me and keeping me safe and, you know, nurturing me is doing the exact opposite. And so the, a child comes into the world completely and totally surrendered, trusting that the mother and the father are going to take care of the child. This is just our natural, you know, human instinct of, of innocence and purity, yeah. right? It's going to come into the world with its hands and its feet up in the air on its back, right? trusting right. that someone's going to take care of me. Right. And now they're being abused. Now they're being taken advantage of. So a mechanism like clicks on inside of a human being where it's too traumatizing for me to handle this because the body can actually implode. The body can act, the energy can be so intense inside of somebody's body that you can die from that. Is that right? something that's, well, I mean, technically die? Or are we talking about somebody who might want to kill themselves? For, for Both. Experiences? Yeah, it can it, it can happen in you know in, in both ways. I mean, there's people who who die of brain aneurysms. Oh wow! Right. Trauma. Okay. Yeah, from a trauma, like it's too intense, it's too too traumatic. You know, people. I mean, how many times have we heard of? Yeah, the person was just kind of standing there. They just fainted and they died. They had heart failure or something failed. Okay. Right. Yeah. But we don't really, you know, and we try to find out what the cause is, but we don't necessarily always know what the cause is of death. You're right. Those, you know? those stressors do play a role in the way your body functions as well. And, and you know, absolutely how healthy we become. So if we're suppressing or constantly suppressing those terrible emotions, yeah. you're right. That's right. You're right about that. Yeah. Right. And I mean, you know, like in the case, like, so we're talking, oh, this person had a heart attack. Okay, well, why did they have a heart attack? Well, maybe they were so stressed out because of the trauma that happened in their life and they're eating bad food and they're doing all of these things and eventually the heart just stops It's because of stress, because they're over, overly stressed. Their body's not in homeostasis. It's not in balance. Right. There's that, you know, we're, we're constantly having to find our balance here on earth because we live on a planet of duality. Sure. We have negative and positive energy, female and masculine, right? Right. Fear and love. You know, if you go too far one way, right. it's going right. to get really, really uncomfortable. Right. And something, you know, something can happen to this physical body that needs to be loved and nurtured and taken care of. You know, this is this is the temple sure. that that carries the light of creation. This is the temple that carries the inner child, the innocent one inside. And so we have a responsibility as adults to take care of the child 
inside of us. When do you think people decide that in their lives? I mean, not a lot of people are open to using drugs of any kind, um, even, you know, the ones that, that their doctor's prescribing them. So when do you think it becomes necessary? Um, when does it become necessary? Well, I guess there's a, a number of answers to that. It, it becomes necessary when you're sick of yourself, <laughs> when you've really, when you've had enough of yourself <laughs> making right. all of these choices that are, you know, detrimental to your well-being, you know, or your behavior, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I keep repeating the same behavior patterns over and over and over again. I'm in the same relationship over and over and over again. Right. I can't ever get it right. You know what I mean? It's like, how long are you going to continue to go down this road? Are you even present and aware of what you're doing? Right. There's a lot of people that are walking on planet earth that are like zombies and they just do what everybody else tells them to do. And they listen to the TV and they say, oh, take this medicine, eat this food, do this, do that. And they have no background research or understanding of why they're even doing what they're doing, right. why they're operating the way that they're operating. So when it becomes a necessity is when maybe you are an alcoholic or you're a drug addict or you're a food addict or you're a sex addict or you have attached yourself to something that is assisting you in managing and coping with these really uncomfortable feelings in your body. Right. Which seems to be an epidemic nowadays. What's that? Which is a, an absolute epidemic nowadays with people being you know, addicted to things that they believe Correct. are helping them. And the whole design of this system that we are living in here, America, yes. from the school system, to the food system, to the pharmaceutical system, to the financial system, to the economy, to the energy system, all of it is all designed to separate and divide all of us from each other, but from within ourselves, from spirit, mm -hmm. even religion. Uh, That's the biggest one that would just really one. blow people's minds because there's even religions that have people believing that if I follow this religion, this is how I'm going to get to heaven. Right. What if I told you you're already in heaven? Right. And that is taking you out of heaven. It's all deception. There's a lot of deception, corruption, deceit, and a big, like a, a veil of illusion that is happening here on planet Earth. And these plant medicines that we're talking about they bring down the veil and they show you the truth of really what's going on within yourself and the outside world, the global stage. These medicines are medicines of truth. That's why, that's why, that's why they're, they're not readily available to all of us. And they are labeled as drugs or bad. Right. Instead of herbs. Correct. And herbs. that's all a part of the system. Right. I, I can tell you this. I mean, I'm, I'm no different than you or anybody else who's listening or watching this. I grew up in New Jersey right. on the Jersey shore. Right. I grew, I went to a public school. <laughs> I played sports. I thought that I was going to go to college and play at sports in college. I had a regular job. I was a barred back. I did roofing. I was a construction worker. Right. I'm no different than anybody else. But because I've gone down the rabbit hole and I've researched and I have, an un, I have a personal understanding from my own research and my own knowledge and my own connection that I have with Mother Nature and the, and the herbs and the plants and the medicines of the earth. Now, my perspective is completely different. I will never put a pharmaceutical drug in my body. If you paid, if you tried to pay me a hundred million dollars, 
I wouldn't put that vaccine in my body. Right. A lot hundred million. A lot of people are feeling that way also. I mean, <laughs> a billion dollars. How about a billion? You could say, <laughs> I'll, we'll give you a billion dollars. You can have the largest ocean liner cruise ship in the world. We'll give you a house of 50,000 square feet, 17 <laughs> houses all over the world, castles and everything. You're not, no, you're not buying you. it. Yeah. No way. Well, let me ask you. I mean, you, you've you obviously had your own journey with trauma and you've experienced mm -hmm. what you've experienced in your life. And we'll give a little background on that. Yep. So I'd love to hear a little bit of that from you. Um, but I want to know, like, yeah, I mean, you've gone through stuff. You, you, you know, you've used psychedelics to help you personally. You've come mm -hmm. a long way. This was a long journey. This wasn't something that happens overnight. This is like no. experiencing life. And like you're saying, you know, having to get to that point in mm -hmm. where you want to just be at peace with your soul. And so you yes, try psychedelic drugs and, and that'll bring you to that awareness, right? Yeah, Tell absolutely. Me about your journey and how that started. And I know you're helping others now with this. So, and you mm -hmm. become a shaman. Like, who knew Eric Nice from Real World New York, <laughs> you know, the model, uh, you know, the, the it boy for the moment was going to be a shaman? Like, how did I've, that come to be? <laughs> I, I definitely didn't think that that was going to happen. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'm very open, I'm very transparent and very vulnerable with my story and things that have happened to me, um, you know, but I grew up in a home where my father was absent and he was not emotionally available to communicate with me at all about emotional things. My brother, who couldn't handle how much I loved him and idolized him and wanted to be him, who was four years older than me and like the superstar athlete in my town, a basically took it, you know, abused me and bullied me and made fun of me and teased me. And that went on year after year after year after year, up until I got to the point where I, I hit him hard enough. Right. And the, you know, it changed, um, you know, because I, you know, like oh most homes in America, my, my, the house I grew up in was dysfunctional. Um, emotionally dysfunctional. And um, when I was uh, 12 or 13 years old, I lost my virginity to a woman who raped me. Oh. And, you know, my first girlfriend cheated on me. And, you know, all of my first time things when it came to sexuality and emotional connection um, with women where I was, you know, taken advantage of. So I didn't trust women. And then later on, I had um, a man who came into my life who brainwashed me, manipulated me, took advantage of me, stole from me, and ultimately would molest me. And that brought me almost to the point of taking my own life. So because I grew up in this environment with all of these traumas and all of this abuse, um, I didn't feel safe. Sure. I didn't feel safe. And, and even my very first sexual experience was with my best friend who was a boy when I was eight years old. Wow. So I definitely couldn't talk about those things right. in the house that I was in. I didn't have a father to talk to about it. And my mom, um, bless her heart and soul, she didn't want anybody to know in the neighborhood what was happening inside of our family and i and i get that yeah. you know so there was no outlet i had nobody to talk to about the things that were happening to me and i had no education or understanding or an example of what a harm uh, a harmonizing um aligned relationship looked like between a man and a woman right never saw it no idea then when it when it came to sexuality i wasn't learning or understanding anything about sacred sexuality right so I mean, drug addiction I, I, sex I addiction um self 
destructive path using drugs in a negative way, cocaine, marijuana, ecstasy, you know, you, you name anything that I could get my hands on to escape from what I was feeling inside. Right. I had to do it because if I didn't do that, even, even, you know, alcohol and cocaine and all of those things, yeah, they're terrible for your body. They destroy your body. They'll destroy your mind. But if I didn't have access to those, I might have been dead. Right. Right. So they helped me. They actually are assisting people in coping and managing with a traumatized nervous system. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. I understand that. Right. So then I became famous. Right. And that just magnified all of it. So here I am, 21 years old. I have a a show that is seen by 90 million people from around the world. Still so young. Like, I mean, a a baby. I can't even believe you're saying 21 because it doesn't feel like it should be that long ago. I know. (laughs) But yeah. Bless our own hearts. Yeah, right. To think you were 21 and, and having that kind of you know, publicity in your life. I can almost imagine how overwhelming that would be, let alone all your personal, you know, experiences that you were dealing with growing up. But now here you are on full display. So yeah, what was that like for you? It was- I mean, it looked like you were having fun, but- (laughs) Oh, it was amazing. I I have no regrets. It was so much fun. All of my friends and family and everybody got to experience that with me. I traveled the world. I, you know, I met people that I- you know, wouldn't probably have had a chance to ever meet and, you know, getting into clubs for free, going to restaurants for free, getting free clothes, flying around first class, money in my pocket. I mean, you would think, you would think, oh, you made it. Right. Yeah. Then that's how everybody looked at it. You made it. And then, and then, you know, when I got in, when I was like 23 years old is when the manager came into my life and like destroyed my career and molested me. And um, yeah, I was on the verge of suicide and I felt like I had no way out and everything was just coming crumbling down. I mean, all my, all of my relationships, MTV, Universal Studios, all these huge opportunities of, you know, big, big money and stuff. It all just went crashing down. I'm so and, sorry um, that happened to you. I mean, yeah, everything. no, it, it actually, I appreciate that. But um, 15 years later, or 20 years later, while in the jungles of Peru drinking ayahuasca, uh, I was in a ceremony one night, and I was very, very uncomfortable in in my body. She was Grandma Ayahuasca was bringing up all of the uh, rage and anger. Um, and these emotions that I was pushing down in, in my body and not willing to look at. And so for about an hour and a half, I was like squirming around on my mat, super uncomfortable. And, um, I screamed in my mind, what am I fighting? And right in my face came my manager. Oh, the guy who did this to me right. and they, and I heard in spirit, if, if he didn't come into your life and do that to you and shake you up, you would be dead. Oh, wow. Because I was on a self-destructive path with drugs. Okay. And I sat in that anger and that pain. Um, and then it took me into gratitude and thanking him for saving my life. And I I cried for probably four hours that night, like out in the jungle, on the sand in, you know, it was really incredible. Um, But in that moment, what I thought was the worst thing that had ever happened to me in my life actually turned out to be my greatest blessing. And that completely shifted my perception on life and experiences and you know, took me deeper into wanting to understand, like, where is my soul from? And why is it here? And 
What did I come here to do? What's my purpose? What's my mission? What's my place? You know, what is what what's going on here? <laughs> what's yeah, yeah, the truth? I think a lot of people are looking for that. I mean, I think a lot of yeah. people like what's been going on in the world. And, um, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of the same story since the time of men. You know, we go yes. through all these traumas and maybe, you know, it's just our journey here, like you said before, to experience this earthly experience. Yeah. What is the message though? Why do we have to experience this? Why do we have to go through this? <laughs> well, I have a lot of, I have actually, I have answers because I've asked the questions and I've been going through this and doing this for more than 25 years. Um, you know, after that happened with my manager, it wasn't much longer that I would meet my first teacher okay. who was an eighth generation um, grandmaster of Chinese medicine and a 21 den black belt of three different martial arts. His mom was the queen of the mountain people of Vietnam. Wow. And he was trained by the greatest minds and martial artists since he was two years old. And How did I lived... you meet him? Did you seek him or? Did you... Yeah, well, that's what happens. You know, you like, you know, you need help and you go out and you ask for help, but you ask the universe for help and it will come when the, when you're, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. That's great. And um, my brother had met him four years before me. Oh, okay. And so when I was in my early 20s, when all the MTV stuff happened, he would talk about this master, this master, but I couldn't hear it at that time. Right, right. And um, so one day, I, my brother was going up to go see him to bring some friends to help uh, with their addictions. Okay. And um, I was in a very, very dark place in my life I knew I needed help and so I I went with them and I spent four days uh, with him and um, I felt the day when I was leaving I started crying and my brother asked me you know like why are you crying and I was like because I feel like this is my home this feels like home to me and um, three months later I was after I took all these herbs and he, um, he said to me, he said, he, he did this thing called a vibrational reading. Okay. Um, and he checked my heart and my blood and everything. He said, your blood is like mud. And if you continue on this path that you're on, you're going to develop a blood clot within 10 years and you're going to die. Wow. You need to change your ways. And if you want, I will, I'll help you. I'll train you. And so I lived with him on and off and on for the next seven years. Wow. That's a long journey. Yeah. And are you, um, still, are you still on this journey? Do you find that you're still searching or that you are now you're helping people, um, you know, with this treatment? What, what's that like now turning the dial and being able yeah. to help others? It's amazing. I've been doing this for like 15 years. I've been taking people into the desert. Um, I created a program called the Beauty Way. Okay. And um, mostly I've worked with drug addicts okay. where I take them into the desert for a month and I just transform their lives. I clean their bodies out, um, their minds. I connect them with their inner child and their ancestors. I help them to remember and to understand who they are and why they're here. And when they're done with me, they go back out into the world seeking and searching and you know, looking for answers and continue, continuing to heal and being in service to helping others. Excellent. That's wonderful. You're paying back to the universe almost to, to help others, right? Yeah. So that's, that's what we're here for. I, I hope to think that everyone's purpose is to help each other, right? I mean, do you feel the same way about that, Absolutely. that everyone's underneath it all, your purpose should be to help others and help well, to, you know, not to go into too much detail about it, you know, because of time or whatever, but, um, you know, I feel like through my journey and searching that I have found the answers. I do know why we're here and I know where we came from and I know what what this experience and this experiment is all about here on, you know, our little tiny little blue planet that we call Earth or we call home for now. Right. Um as earthlings, this is our home. This is where earth people live, people of the four elements. Um, but our souls came from another star system. And we all collectively agreed to come here to be a part of a grand experiment 
on a planet of duality where emotion exists and we have light and we have dark and there's a spiritual battle that's happening between the light and the dark outside of us and within us right and this is our test this is our challenge is to go within and to find equanimity within ourselves and to heal our ancestral lineage because if we're successful we will see the dawning of a new day of a new of, of a new earth you know and people are talking about this the indigenous people talk about this in their prophecies mm -hmm. um and the writings that they've left on the walls of their ancient temples there have been ancient civilizations that were here on this planet atlantis lemuria egypt you know they're still you know, Mayan temples and ruins of these ancient civilizations that lived here a long time ago that were highly advanced, more advanced than we are. The Egyptian, you know, the, e the Egyptians and the Sumerians and the Atlanteans, their technology is like light years ahead of where we're at. And our, you know, intellectual arrogance, yeah, you know, yeah thinks that you know we're these oh look we have cell phones and right, oh, we right. can talk to each other from a, <laughs> yeah but how about they communicated telepathically and they could they could you know transport their souls and travel all around the universe and there are people that can still do that extraterrestrials and spaceships and this technology has been around for thousands it's been around forever right and do you think we, that because we're so egotistical yes um, that we're actually you know suppressing like we're keeping ourselves from experiencing that enlightenment we we are self-absorbed with our trauma okay yes we are self-absorbed i would say that again we are self-absorbed with our own trauma yeah and why is because when you go through a traumatic emotional experience and you don't feel safe to process the information and the experience in the moment, our physical body, which is made up of minerals and water and fire and air, hold the information, hold the vibration hold the frequency of the trauma and we with our minds with our judgment right. and our fear and our insecurity and low self-esteem and doubt and all of these things that we create in our with our minds we push those vibrations down into the body and it drives us crazy <laughs> It drives us crazy to the point where you, where you will actually take your own life and blame somebody else for it. Right. That's the victim program. I that the whole I planet. I get that. I, I think whole, people we, think there are people who also feed off th that fact. I mean, when you watch the news, if, if they're not feeding you good news, they're feeding you the bad news because there's a part of us that almost feeds off of that negativity. Would you say that? Well, that's a great question, but there's also something else that feeds off of that negativity. And those are spirits. Okay. Those are, those are, those are lower world, lower density, right. lower frequency spirits that feed off of what you create. Right. Right. We're all creators. Yes. And then so we create something and then people feed off of it, right? You create, um, uh, um, it's funny, but you create, let's just say a cabbage patch doll. Okay, <laughs> right. Well, you created a cabbage patch doll and then what happened? You have millions of kids that are feeding off of it. Right. They wanna hold it, they wanna touch it, they wanna play with it. They're eating it in some way. They're taking in the creation in some way, right? So right. We're, 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 we are sensual, creative beings that bring life into this world, but we are in a system mm -hmm. where we have to create something 
to offer to the world to survive. That's terrible. <laughs> That's right. Because in the indigenous cultures, they don't do that. They, they live in harmony mm -hmm. and in alignment with nature. And they utilize what nature has provided to them to live in harmony with nature. So they make a bamboo hut. They right. make a, um, an igloo or they make a yurt or something, right. but it's all out of natural materials. Right. And then they tend to the land. They drink the water that comes down the stream. They're, nature's providing. They're staying in alignment with. with they're, they're in alignment. And then, and then, but they do it honorably. So even when they, when they receive something from the earth, they're doing prayers and dances. They're giving an offering back to the earth. Everything That's the balance. An offering of gratitude. <laughs> Where would people go yes. to find your services? Are you out of Hawaii only? Do you travel or how would somebody? No, I, I, I travel. I was just in, I was just in Peru in the sacred Valley of Peru for four and a half months with working with a, a number of people there. Um, I'm here now because I was called back to come to these islands to work on a very special project here to build a temple to the to the Hawaiian people. So I'm here doing that now and now and I organize, um, you know, retreats here. Um, okay, how would somebody find you? Is there a website we can? Yeah, look? well, I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Eric Nice 333. And then I also have my website is I A M I M Eric Nice dot com. Is that something that we can simply say, you know, sign up for? Or how does how do you go about? Yeah, people, people reach out to, I send out newsletters. So I have uh, an email list, you know, like when we're doing something. Okay. good. Um, but no, people, people contact me in all different kinds of ways. I'm, I'm accessible to the public. So um, it's very easy to contact me. If you go on Instagram, you can easily find me. I got a blue check next to me yeah. <laughs> and um, you can just send me a direct <laughs> message. So, um, so what would you say to people who are interested in using microdosing or even, you know, going a little step further um, in their journey to, to find these? Yeah, I mean, my work is all about the liberation of the soul, liberating the soul from physical suffering, emotional suffering, psychological suffering, and even spiritual suffering, which I kind of refer to as the ancestral lineage suffering that people are going on going through because these behavior patterns these programs that are within the lineage they get passed down from one generation to the next to the next to the next That's you know right. people don't necessarily understand why they operate the way that they do why do they behave the way they do why do they react the way that they do it's part when, of their dna right yeah when, this actually i spoke to um name is Dr. Bruce Perry, and he did a book with Oprah about just that, past traumas and how to deal with that um, through mm -hmm. community and, and other uh, things. But um, but he did mention that it is in our DNA. So maybe ancestors of ours who were slaves, you know, without knowing part of yep. your reaction is something that comes from them. So it, it is yes. like passed down without realizing that that's something you're experiencing. Right. Well, that's absolutely 100% correct. Um, and I've done that work, you know, I've gone back many, many, many lifetimes to understand, you know, why, why I operate the way that I do. Um, but the greater understanding and why it's paramount at this time for all of us to, to have access to this information is because we're, we're in a time right now that the larger majority of the planet does not understand. They don't have the awareness of what is actually happening here with the ascension of the planet and why this conversation and this information about the liberation of the soul, the liberation of the ancestral lineage is so important right now. And the reason why is because we we are existing in a third dimensional plane of frequency and vibration. And we're moving from the third dimension, 
through the fourth into the fifth dimension. And in the fifth dimension, fear and all of the things that come with fear do not exist in the fifth dimension. Right. So our physical earth suits, these, this cellular earth suit that we are in is transforming into a crystal cellular earth suit. Okay. And the reason why is because our physical body has to transform to be able to hold the frequencies of the fifth dimension. This has been an, a, 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 an experiment and a test that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years here on planet earth. Right. And five times the darkness has won. Tell me and there has been a times. reset. What would have been those five times? Well, you have the, 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 the age, the, the time of the Lumerians. Okay. There used to be a continent in the Pacific ocean called Mu, M U. Okay. And it's underwater now. And then you also have Atlantis, which was in off the coast of um, South Carolina and Georgia and the water there. Atlantis is like where all the planes go down yeah, yeah, the Bermuda sure. Triangle. Yeah, that I'm familiar with. Yeah. So there's Atlantis and then there's Egypt. You know, the whole northern part of Egypt was a beautiful uh, garden. Right now it's all desert. Right. Because there was the there are these resets that happened, where the whole the whole civilization everything was just wiped out and they started over again. Well, now it's a little bit different because we've act we're, we we have actually um, we've won this time. Oh, we are victorious, and we are now in the process of transforming the entire planet. And what you're seeing right now, and it's going to get worse over the next probably two to five years, is that all of the darkness, the corruption, the lies, mm -hmm. politics, the wars, all these warmongers, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine and all over the world, all of these people mm -hmm. who are sociopaths and are narcissistically obsessed with controlling and manipulating and brainwashing people for their own personal benefit right. are all gonna start to destroy each other. And here's the reason why. In this time of ascension, what is happening is we personally are doing the inner work. We are shining our own light on our own shadows and we're healing our lineages. So as these light workers do this very important work here on planet earth and the light workers, these ancient souls that have come here, been here for a long time going through this process, as we all unite and we heal together and we see each other, it sends out a ripple effect of energy it's like when you throw a stone in the water sure. and the and the waves they ripple out and the longer that those waves move like in a tsunami they go faster and faster and faster so the more of us that come together and awaken ourselves and each other the rest of the world is watching and and right. thanks to this internet right <laughs> That's right. Right. That's Being right. able to share information like this. And so this is which has been shared for a long time with the indigenous people of the planet planet. There's prophecies and there's ancient knowledge and teachings that have been left behind. And they're calling this the time of the great awakening, the great purification. Well, what are we awakening from and what are we purifying? The, the great purification is the purification of the soul. Right. And that, what are we awake? Spirit. Yes. And what are we awakening from? We're awakening from this slumber and this illusion and this lie that fear is something that is real. Right. 
Oh, I like that. And it's not real judgment. It's not real, but it's imprinted. It's programmed into our minds. So we're deprogramming from that. And to bring it all back to the topic of conversation, mm -hmm. mushrooms, the ayahuasca, the wachuma, the iboga, the peyote, the toad medicine, the frog medicine, all of these medicines that are here for us are assisting us in our purification, in our awakening. And now why? Here's the big picture. Okay. We were meant to come here to be stewards of the planet, to take care of the planet, to take care of each other. Well, we have got, we've gotten lost in our ways. We have forgotten why we came here. This is the Garden of Eden. Gotcha. This is heaven on earth. We're cre we are choosing, we have a choice in every moment to bring heaven to earth. The heaven that lives within us. Right. And this is, th this is the teachings. This is the messages that Buddha and yeah. Jesus... And Kuan Yin and these masters, they left that they left instructions. The, they're called ascended masters because they ascended the illusion of separation. Oh, yes, I like that. And division. Oh, ascended the illusion. I love that. You just said that. <laughs> I could talk about this all day, or I could just listen all day. <laughs> This is great stuff. I mean, it's so. Do you real. see? You, you it, feel it, that? Yeah. I just want to. I just want to acknowledge something. The feeling that you just had in your body, your the blood in your body in your face. You just it got flush. Yes. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, but I know because I can feel it. Oh so, wow! So what just happened was the information that I'm sharing with you. This is truth. This is universal truth. I'm sharing with you the understanding of the laws of the universe and the laws that the natural laws that govern planet Earth. Your soul and the little girl inside of you recognize that and you felt it and it it it, it enlightened your physical body. Yeah, I, I truly believe in everything we've spoken about today. Um, it's just been something that has been with me since I've been a child. Um, yes. And so I do believe um, in the higher being or the spirit. So yeah. this is great. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. I cannot wait to have you on the cover of Preferred Health Magazine and to share this message with awesome. everyone. This is a great time. I know it's a hard time for the world and for us to be in, but like you're saying, we're becoming woke in a different type of way. In a, in a much different in a much different way and and the, and the icing on the cake and you'll remember this many many years from now and you'll start to hear this more probably within the next five years is the word star kingdom star kingdom we remember what i said we it's already done right. we are victorious the light has won and now you're going to see the destruction of the darkness. And there is going to become a day in the future, very near future, that you and I will see okay. for the very first time that a planet of duality in the universe mm -hmm. transformed itself and ascended into a star kingdom of only love. This is what we came here to do. We came from another star system where it was only love. Right. But we agreed to come here with amnesia and forget where we're from because of the warriors of the light that we are. We took on the challenge. Can we ever really forget, though? Because I feel like we're born with that innocence and that light. And so yes, even, you know, despite our traumas and things, you know, our environments, um, I think it's I don't know if it's in the soul or in the mind that if you just keep believing or mm -hmm. feeling that you're, I always used to say this when I was a kid, I, my family was very religious, Catholic, 
And I used to say that I am not only, this is what I've learned, I am not only human, but I'm also divine. And mm -hmm. saying that to myself and believing that has helped me greatly throughout all the traumas I've been through in my life. And mm -hmm. it's also, I feel it's kept me from, you know, ever thinking about taking my life because I felt that my life didn't really belong to just myself. Beautiful. And so I didn't ever consider that because I just didn't. So I, I get it. I can cry, like thinking about how deep that feeling goes and how happy I am and the joy that it brings. Yeah, that's beautiful. Let it let those um, angel tears of, of joy release. Thank you so much for sharing that. But yes, the, the information, it's locked within our souls. It's locked within our DNA. And that's who we are, where we came from. And as the times and, and the energies and everything shift on the planet, it awake, it's awakening. We're remembering. And it's, we're unlocking codes and information and sounds and vibrations like in our bodies. It's just like this whole magical yeah, yeah. swirling energy that's constantly happening of sacred sexuality and sensuality and the divine masculine and feminine coming together to create whatever it is that we want to create. You know, I, the funny thing is we're doing a feature outside of your interview. We're doing a feature um, that is also kind of talking about how do you achieve transcendence or enlightenment through meditation, through making love, mm -hmm. through you know, doing, uh, you know, psychedelic drugs and whatnot. But but yeah, we're doing kind of like trying to, you know, people are seeking. We're looking, we're hoping, we're wishing, we're, you know, we're seeking truth. Yeah. And I think it's just the time that we're in. And I don't know if it's the age that I have. <laughs> Maybe it's, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but yeah, this is just great to speak to you today about this. And thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate you and what you do with the magazine and, and reaching people, sharing information. It's so important right now. So yeah, it's an, an honor for, for me to be here, to be able to share. So thank you. Thank you, Eric. And that concludes another great episode of Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Eric Meese. For more information about Eric and the help that he's been giving to others using psychedelic plant medicine, please visit www.imericmeese.com.